So I'm Ava Lox Davis. I'm the director of exhibits here at the Children's Museum of the East End, located in Bridgehampton on the Sag Harbor Bridgehampton Turnpike. And we're excited to announce our latest exhibit, See Me Discover My Community. It's our third annual exhibit. This year we featured four new nonprofits, local organizations that make a difference in our community. And we featured the Pediatric Dental Fund of the Hamptons, the Bridgehampton Historical Society, the Riverhead Foundation for Marine Research and Preservation, and WLU Public Radio. One of the special things about this exhibit is we take these four nonprofits and we try and teach our visitors a little bit about how they change and make a difference in our community. First thing that we do, we recreate the facades of each of the organizations for recognition. So let me take you in and I can show you some of the exhibit elements. Today we have a school group visiting which is part of our program here at the Children's Museum. We're a resource, an education resource for the schools as well as for the community. Behind me is the Bridgehampton Historical Society's Corwith House, which is located on 27 in Bridgehampton. And you can see it's a replica of the actual house. We use the Historical Society's platform of looking at Bridgehampton's history as a platform of how things have changed on the East End or how they haven't. Um, in the exhibit, we focused primarily on domestic life as well as um, family history, how people came to the East End, why they came to the East End. So we're here in the Bridgehamptons Corwith House, the Historical Society's Corwith House. We've created a nice timeline to sort of set the stage for everybody who's coming in. But one of the best parts about this exhibit is we get to look at some of the things from yesteryear and how they've changed or not changed in time. In complete contrast, we have today's modern kitchen and its tools, and it presents a great opportunity for children's role play. Who doesn't like to bake a cake? People have always traveled to the East End for centuries. One of the things we like to do with our visitors is find out where your families come from in order to come here. So we've done it in two ways. We've asked you to mark it on the map as well as look at the genealogy map of your family specifically so we have an activity for you to fill out. This is an opportunity for the younger visitor and the grown-up visitor to work together to find out a little bit more about your own family's history. So at the Riverhead Foundation for Marine Research and Preservation, we took the opportunity to look at how we could make their jobs easier. They're the famous people who go out and rescue those sea turtles and dolphins. And we want to make their job easier by actually cleaning up the beaches. So this section is dedicated to stashing your trash and looking at what marine debris we would find in a day's visit. The actual facade is the true facade of the Marine Foundation that's located up at Atlantis Marine World. And inside, we've done some role play activities on some of the aspects of their organization, the research, rehabilitation, rescue, and then the best part about this organization is the release portion. Does it feel better now? 
Maybe your friend could put him in the tank so he can go swimming again. What's wrong with him? What do you think's wrong with him? His leg. WLU Public Radio, Radio Station is located at the former Southampton College, now the Stony Brook University Long Island campus. So we've recreated the facade of the radio station. It's a jazz radio station, but they also do public radio programming. So inside we looked at music appreciation and jazz awareness, some great jazz artists of history. But we also wanted to take a chance for the children to actually do some role play in the radio station, do some radio plays, learn a little bit about broadcasting history. In fact, we put the radio tower up so at any distance you can find exactly where we're broadcasting to. But why don't you all come on in? One of the organizations that CME is featuring this year is called the Pediatric Dental Fund of the Hamptons. And while most people don't know much about them, they're a great organization that provides funds for oral health care for kids who can't afford. So what we did was we created sort of a general dentist office and we looked at breaking the fear of going to the dentist because that will make everybody's jobs easier. Also, oral health in general and nutrition as a part of preventative care to taking care of your teeth. But just like playing doctor, the kids love to go to the dentist and play dentist within. So why don't you come on in and take a look. Brush our teeth. How do we brush our teeth? We brush 
same thing about a tomato. Is that healthy? Is that good for your teeth? Good job. What we've done in this area is we've actually set up a full dentist's office with a waiting room so you're familiar with what you might see at the dentist's office. We have some computer interactives that allow us to look at your tooth timeline, the anatomy of a tooth, and the breakdown of those teeth that are going to be falling out over time, which is great for the little guys to know. We've also presented some opportunity for you to look at if you don't take care of your teeth, what will happen to you and we don't want that to happen. The proper dental care as far as how long you're actually supposed to brush your teeth, how long you're supposed to flush your, uh, floss your teeth, and the kind of nutrition that will help take care of your teeth as well. But on the fun side of things, we've created a little tooth fairy area because that's the exciting part when the teeth fall out. We're placing that tooth under a pillow so that tooth fairy can come along and in in case you want to be the tooth fairy and pretend to bring all the magic that they do, you can dress up as a tooth fairy. One of the great things about this exhibit is we have so much support from our local community because it's important for us to see who else is making a difference. So in each exhibit we've included a creation station for the artist in us, but we've also included a book nook because reading is so important. And Bookhampton, who's a local bookseller, has actually sponsored all of our book nook, our reading areas. And in each area they've selected some lovely books that cover some of the themes of each of the organization's missions. Uh, we've had all of our computers donated from East End Computers. We've had a lot of supplies, materials, and construction things. Our paint was donated from Sherwin-Williams. Everybody's really gotten behind this exhibit. And without them, we wouldn't have been able to make it possible. Hi, I'm Eric Sal. I'm the principal of Spring School. Um, having an organization like See Me out here in the East End is truly valuable. It allows kids to expand on their learning experiences, having them take these abstract concepts that they learn in school and ha apply hands-on activities that really allows them to have enduring understandings. For myself as a parent, as an educator, I highly recommend it. I know I've brought my own son here to many of the classes they offer on the weekend, and I highly recommend these type of programs, these hands-on activities that are relevant in today's education for all the teachers and educators that are out here in the East End. Thank you. My name is Eva Peterson, and I work at the Children's Museum. One of the reasons I started at the Children's Museum was because they sponsored a program that I designed with a friend of mine called Classroom Connection. And in Classroom Connection, um, we join students to other students who don't know one another from different schools. They write profiles of one another, they write profiles of themselves, and they, we exchange those profiles with children from a different school. And upon the exchange of the profile, each child is given a kite. Then they're asked to illustrate that kite based on their profile partner's description of themselves. And then we have a date, which this year is going to be April 16th, 
where they all meet in Sag Harbor at the park and they meet each other for the first time and they get to fly their kites together and it's a wonderful, wonderful experience for everybody involved. The teachers love it because it incorporates writing and art artistic implementation of their writing experience and the kids love it because they make a new friend and they learn that even their neighbors are just like them. They have their differences but really we're all the same and that really is what the message is all about. Down here is part of the museum that has all the classes for the children. We have workshops and programming for children ages four to approximately 11 years old. Some of the children, today what you're going to see is along with when the school groups come, children do art projects that tie in with the current exhibit, See Me Discover My Community. And hi, kids. <laughs> What are you children making? Uh, Our own world. Your own world. is one of our um, wonderful community members that comes to the Children's Museum for programming. And what do you think of the programming at CIMI? I think they're great, really great for even the adults that bring the kids here. It's wonderful. We have a good time at the play class making all different kinds of projects. Chloe Ann brings her, I, you're the nanny yes. of, um, what's your, the little one's name? Dylan Walcott and Wales Walcott. And on Thursday mornings, we have a wonderful clay class that uh, Mary Jaffe, the potter, has been holding here for probably going on two years now. We have programming for children, um, toddlers in the morning and in the afternoon. And we have very exciting uh, projects for children after school as well that tie in with our new exhibit. So I'm glad that you like the program in here. We try to always ask our community um, members, parents, what they think of the programming and how, what we can do. Because a lot of times parents have different time frames. Does, um, does he go to school? Yes, but he goes three days a week. So the days he come here, he doesn't go to school. So that's good. Are you coming to any of our family weekend performances? Yes, we will. Hopefully, yeah, there's, we have a lot planned. The whole new education guide is coming out in about two weeks, so we have wonderful programs set up for the children starting at uh, the end of January. That would be great. We will certainly be coming. Great. Was well, I seeing you again? I have with me Maria, and Maria, what's your last name? Matana. Maria is taking a class that we offer after school to tie in with the Riverhead Foundation for Marine Preservation and Research. And she comes here with about, how many kids are in the class, Maria? Um, probably around 20. 20 kids are in the class? 15 are in the class. And we have educators that come on Thursdays, and they work with the children. And what do they teach you about? Um, about how they live and how to save them and with the body parts. It's a whole rescue, rehabilitation of our sea creatures and how to take care of them and what to do if you are walking along the beach and all of a sudden you see. Well, I know something what to do. Uh, you have to stay away from the tail and the beak. Did they teach you this? 
Yes. Why do you have to stay away from the tail and the beak? Because the tail is really strong and the beak has sharp teeth. Wow. Did you know that? <laughs> you should take a class at the Children's Museum and find out more. <laughs> but seriously, about two weeks ago, where did you go with the Riverhead Foundation? We went to the beach somewhere probably around here. We went down to the beach. And what did we do down at the beach with the educators? We split up, split up into two groups and we pretended that there's a dolphin, then learned how to put them on the carrier. Right, on the carrier. And then took step by step how to learn how to save them. That's right. And last but not least, the course is almost ended. We usually have about six week sessions yep. for all of the workshops. And the children don't know this, but they get to go to the Riverhead Foundation Hospital. And they will actually work with the educators up there. And they will see the educators in action taking care of our sea creatures. What did you say? Oh, cool. Oh, cool is right. Thank you, Maria. Well, are you going to come and take some more classes at the Children's Museum? Probably. Probably? Yep. Good. This is, these are the, this is the permanent exhibit. And then the exhibit that you saw before, which will be up for three months, and then um, that will change, and then we'll have a new exhibit. And Ava Logs Davis, she's the director of exhibits. So she'll be starting a new, that will come down in about the end of March. But to tie in with the new exhibit, See Me Discover My Community, we have children that are taking classes in radio broadcasting. So they've actually gone to um, WLIU radio station in Southampton, and Wally Smith is conducting the class. And they're actually going to be putting on a radio play. Um, some of the children are working on Little Orphan Annie the original Superman script, and last but not least, Abbott and Costello, who's on first. And that will be, they will be recording it at WLIU radio station, and it will be um, on the air in a few weeks. And also we're planning a trip to the Paley Center in New York, the old uh, television and radio station for the children. We offer scholarships on a continuous basis. So if a continual basis. So anybody that wants to participate and if um, it's a hardship, we are always open to having children um, participate that couldn't normally afford it. And we have a great pool of people that are always willing to write a check to make sure a child can participate in our classes and workshops. And we are planning for the summer to have wonderful um, programming for the older children as well and that is you know stay tuned because we have some pretty exciting projects coming up for the older kids but to get back to the workshops now and that will be starting at the end of January we have old time cooking classes for the children where they're going to be actually learning about how now and then how people cooked at the turn of the century and they're going to be writing their own cookbook we have old time scrapbooking we are starting a special needs workshop for children with learning disabilities on Saturday mornings for ages four to six and then ages seven to 10. We have a wonderful um, educator that is going to be conducting the workshop. What else do we have? We have jazz art workshops where we've had musicians come in and play while the children are painting or working in different art materials. Um, what else do we have? And of course we have the, the workshops for the younger children. We have toddler tumbling, we have toddler tango, baby boogie, toddler art classes. <laughs> and what else? Oh, and of course we have fairy tale, the fairy tale dreams um, workshop where children, we've had different educators come in and talk to the children about how to take care of their teeth and nutrition and also wonderful fairy tales from around the world about who is the tooth fairy and how in Africa, do they believe in the tooth fairy or do they believe that a little mouse comes along and takes your tooth? Hmm. So I hope that if you haven't taken a class yet at CME, you definitely will come and participate because we are always open to suggestions and we're always, always happy to have new children come and participate and have a great time at the Children's Museum of the East End. I'm Jackie Leader, Director of Programming, and I hope to see you soon.
here at the Arlene and Alan Alda Amphitheater. And in the summer, you must come to see me on Wednesdays for our Whirly Gig Wednesday performances. Bring a dinner and enjoy a great performance. This summer, we have some really great performers planned to come to perform for us. Last year, who did we have? We had an original play, a musical, entitled Who is Natalie Spoo? We also had the Dirty Sock Fun Time Band. We had a wonderful Chinese theater group. And planned for this summer on Wednesdays, Whirly Gig Wednesdays. So be sure to check our website. It'll be in our education guide. And we have a lot going on this summer also for the children and adults at the Children's Museum of the East End.